Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to another tutorial. I've had a lot of people ask about um, Octane camera depth of field or how I make things blurry in the foreground or background or just kind of focus on an object and only have that um, in focus. So today we'll go over a couple of camera settings. I'll show you the, not really ins and outs, but enough stuff to kind of get you going. And everything else is just kind of artistic, I'd say. Realistically, you don't use a lot of these uh, settings um, unless you're going for a specific look. So we got my camera. I've got five cubes. Got a plane. Um, super easy scene. And then just a octane daylight environment. And I don't think I've done anything to it. Actually, I made it. Uh, I turned this up here. Essentially what this does is imagine a really bright sunny day and then as you turn this up it's getting cloudy like diffused. See how the shadows are even going away and it's kind of getting a uniform lighting. So this right here just pretend it's your cloudy setting and then for my north offset I just moved it so my shadows are going over here. I mean, I just, none of this is important for the, uh, the camera settings. I just, this is just how I like to work. Okay, so let's focus in here. Uh, so the first camera setting I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my camera and then my viewport, which I guess I didn't have to open that. Uh, viewport display right here. Turn this up and this will just kind of concentrate our view here. All right, uh, first thing I normally do, well, actually, I guess that was the first thing I'll do in this tutorial, but first thing I normally do um, is I come down here and I turn on the camera imager, and this allows me to essentially edit my scene, uh, edit the lighting and look in my scene without <clears throat> having to worry about like a post or anything like that. So if I just want to get something really quick and I want a certain look, I don't want to mess with my lighting, you know, I, I've got my reflections and my shadows and everything how I want. I can come in here and I can play with the response type and go through and pick something that looks cool. Let's say I really like this look here, but I want it maybe like a little darker. I can play with the gamma or I want it, you know, to have vignetting. Get a little vignette on there. So then I can just render it out and it's done. I don't have to take it into Photoshop or Lightroom, which you do have a lot more control um, if you're just doing an image in Photoshop and Lightroom. If you're doing an image sequence or a video, um, something like Fusion or After Effects is gonna give you a lot more um, flexibility in your look, but you can dial in a lot of it just right here. Um, I'm just gonna put this back to 2.2 and linear for this example, no vignetting. And I'll touch on some other stuff here in a sec. Um, but the main thing was the depth of field. So say I want to focus on this cube right here. Select your camera. Go to your depth of field right here. And this eyedropper, if you select this and you turn up your aperture, it'll actually blur out the background. And normally if you have autofocus checked, that doesn't work, but for some reason it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so uncheck it anyways, and crank up your aperture. So now your cube, this face of the cube most likely, since that's what we picked, um, or it's either this face or this plain flat. Let me show you. Um, so if I click the cube, yeah, your essentially imaginary depth of field uh, is going to start right here. So right here will be the sharpest, and then from this point back, it will get bl more blurry and uh, blurrier. Now, if you want to select something else, you can exit out, grab your eyedropper, select that cube. Play with the depth of field how you want it. 
and then that's it it's really easy um this took me actually a, a little bit to figure out because i'm used to setting my aperture so if i want a really crazy depth of field <clears throat> and i'm going to go use my camera say i grab like my 85 millimeter f 1.2 which would give me crazy depth of field something this close um it's it's kind of the opposite here you can turn it up uh your bokeh side count i like eight or nine blades so i'm basing it off of how i buy my lenses uh, what's really cool though is if you're looking for that anamorphic effect so if you look up uh anamorphic bokeh you'll see that it's not a perfect circle uh for instance a lot of times you will have a light far in the background let's turn our daylight down a little bit and let's grab this guy and give it a uh, RGB emission material yeah that works turn it up all right and then we want to select this here so this guy's super out of focus and you'll get this big blurry sphere oh uh i'm lost there we go all right so now that's a exaggerate it that's just a nice blurry circle in the background no matter where you put it it's going to get blurry probably turn down the brightness on it because it's kind of too bright uh, I need to go to my nodes to do that. My shader editor. Turn this down a little bit. Okay. So back to the camera. I believe it is the aperture aspect. If you crank this up, you'll actually get that oblong, uh, oblong spherical uh, bokeh look like it's in a lot of the a lot of the movies but you can just google it and check out some still frames it's it's kind of neat now this guy does look a little bit blurry uh, most likely because we have such a high depth of field that it, it's sharp here is it sharp there actually it looks sharper here this is actually a method i don't use I use this eyedropper, but I was going to show you that next. Um, other than clicking something in the distance, what I do is I always set up like a focus box or something, and I do that with an empty. So if you drop in a plane axis, let's just drop in a, a cube. Nah, I lied. Let's drop in a plane axis like I normally do. So this guy, I'm going to name you focus. So then in my camera, I'm going to come down here, select my focus object. So when I render, I can take this and put this anywhere I want. I can animate it. I can do whatever. And I know, I don't have to guess, you know, oh, is this point in focus? Is this point in focus? If I want this corner to be in focus... Of this cube I know putting that right there that will be sharp if I want this front to be as in focus as possible and sharp I'm just gonna move that right there there's no kind of guessing so I recommend doing this on everything have a have a focus box have a couple have a couple cameras I mean you can take this insert a location I don't know, go 30 frames. Insert location. I'm going to copy this so it stays the same to there. And then here, I'm going to go back to here. So this will do like a quick snap. All right, so. Boom, now that's in focus boom now that's in focus that's pretty awesome 
What else? Check my camera. Uh, you've got distortion, which is kind of cool if you've got a really wide angle lens, like 12. And then we're going to come in. Oh boy. Too much. We're going to come in here. Well, let me get some of that depth of field down. That's ridiculous. There we go. So for distortion, you can crank it up and then you can kind of see like right now we've got this almost spherical look to our plane. Everything is distorted. And I kind of thought perspective correction would fix that. I've, or at least make this straight. I could just be using this wrong. I've actually never used it. So I just assumed that it made parallel lines straight when you've got a big uh, distorted lens like this or a really wide angle lens. Yeah. But no. All right, so no distortion. Pixel aspect. Um, this is honestly just up and down stretching your aspect ratio. It'll squash, it'll stretch things out, which you can kind of get some, some cool looks with that. Oop. I do not use it, um, but feel free to play with it. Get some uh, artistic looking setups going, or renders, not setups. Then there's f-stop, which I don't know. I wonder if this is when I have to, oh, when I use the universal camera. I bet that actually does, where did it go? Does more true. Um, depth of field, but no, I guess not. It, it disappeared. I don't use the universal, ca universal camera either. I'm really kind of stuck in my ways, like, I use something, I know it works, so I keep using it. Um, occasionally I'll branch, I'll branch out and do something different and you know, it's, it's cool. It's a fun learning experience. Uh, it's always fun trying new stuff, but if I'm trying to get a project done, I'm not gonna mess with things that I don't use a lot. Um, something I did wanna show you guys that's pretty cool. If you have a scene full of glass and metal and you've got like a lot of little, um, fireflies everywhere actually let's let's make that happen we are in oh why am i in ambient occlude oh, uh yeah i'm in direct lighting let's go to path tracing and then let's turn down the max preview samples and then re-render okay see how i've got these dots these specular dots right here uh fireflies I can come down here to hot pixel removal. And normally in a render, you have way more samples than this, but if you have a couple hot pixels, you can bring this down a little bit and it'll get rid of them. There we go, did you see that right there? Look by my, by my cursor, watch right in here. So you can get rid of fireflies. Try not to go below like 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, you just, you kind of get some weird effects after that. And my artifact will look really strange. Uh, let's see what else. Pre-multiplied alpha. If you are rendering with an alpha channel and your render has really bad, uh, fraying or fringe right here, the pre-multiplied alpha will help clamp that. Normally that's not really an issue, but occasionally I've had a render that it had a little bit of fuzz in the background and it was just a quick image luckily so I just did pre-multiplied alpha, it fixed it and I was good to go. Let's go back, turn up the samples a little bit, let's go back to like 150 and direct lighting. Direct lighting is essentially fake, um, path tracing is your real bounce so if you guys are new to Octane and you're working with glass and you're getting some weird black edges or borders or your glass doesn't look like it's um, clear, turn on path tracing and that, that should just fix it for you. And my favorite, 
is, where'd it go? There we go. The Octane Post Processing. Turn this on here. Turn up my bloom, which if you have a lot of lights and stuff in your scene, turn that back to 10. Let's turn up the bloom. See that right there? Getting kind of hazy, almost foggy. Uh, you can mess with your glare power. So let's exaggerate it. I like doing one and then turning it 90 degrees. Kind of get that anamorphic lens flare style. And then you can blur it so it's not that crazy. And then you can even change the spectral intensity so you kind of give it that, that brightness hue shift. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's all right there in camera. Uh, no Photoshop or messing around with anything. That was a quick rundown of the camera, how I use it. Um, like I said, I don't play with a lot of the settings. I actually, I have not got the fisheye and stuff to work yet. I've not played around in this a lot lately. I've been doing other projects and those have not been um, in Blender. But I'm done with those now and I'm only going to be in Blender. So I will start messing with more stuff. Hopefully learning more about... Uh, Octane's integration into Blender, and I'll try to I'll try to keep bringing over my Cinema 4D and Blender knowledge and making some cool stuff. The next tutorial will be an actual build and follow along. Um, I'm going to be putting the project file on Patreon, which I wasn't sure if I wanted to start a Patreon, but kind of. I don't know. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to see the response. Uh, I'm not doing any type of like crazy expensive tiers or anything, but I'm going to put some of the YouTube videos up. I'm going to put some of my non YouTube stuff up, uh, just random stuff that I've made and just some kind of cool project files. And uh, I'll help you guys out. I've had quite a few people message me and uh, walking them through help them out with their scenes. So I do have my email available too on the about. So if you have questions, I will try to answer them. I do try to answer a lot of the questions and the comments. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, post them below, shoot me an email. Um, I'm hoping, ah, I gotta stop saying um. I'm hoping to have the follow along tutorial recorded in the next day or two. I don't really plan I just kind of go and record and kind of do everything in real time. So when I have an issue, you guys can see how I fix it. I don't edit or cut anything to where after I've already fixed my issue, because if I'm having an issue doing something more than likely a couple of you guys are going to run into it too. Um, so you should know how to fix it. And I think that that should be shown. So hopefully you guys are liking what I'm putting up. Um, again, next tutorial should be pretty awesome. So if you have any questions, uh, post them below and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.